Right, I bet this lot's got you wondering. I'm going to do something different today. And this is a video for Claire's Crafty Corners collaboration that she's doing for Easter for us all. Hello, Claire. Thank you for organising this again. For those of you who don't know, Claire organises a collaboration for a lot of the big dates throughout the year. Easter being the obvious one at the moment. And uh, a whole load of craft people do videos on the same theme and Claire collates them all and puts out a great big playlist for us. It's really good fun and I do encourage you to have a look at the rest of the videos in this playlist. All the links are below. Um, as I know you'll, if you enjoyed this one you'll have great fun watching all the others as well. So today's video is, this, as I said, Easter theme. So I bet this has got you wondering what I'm going to do. We've got here a couple of the regular moulds that many of us have. The little trinket tray, a very popular one I know. A little pot that I've found recently that I think will go nicely with it because it's the same sort of shape. We have some little cheap fabric daffodils that I found at Dunelm. As you can see, the leaves are all wrong, doesn't matter. We have some gravel in different sizes. Yes, I'm dipping into my model railway kit. We have some static grass, which I probably won't be using the static capabilities of. I'll just be using it as a sprinkle and various other bits of my model railway scenery stuff. We've got my trusty clip-on ultraviolet lamp. And in case I need it, my big, bigger overhead lamp that I use for the ultraviolet curing resin as well. And basically what we're going to be making is a funky little Easter trinket tray, as you probably gathered from all that lot. It's just that the materials I'll be using aren't the obvious ones that uh, people usually use in resin. Oh, and I've also got some of my own special scatter mix that I mixed up for doing little flower tops and things like that. So we've got an assortment of interesting stuff to play with. Let's see what I can come up with. See, I'm mixing up some resin here. This is the regular one that I've been using a lot. This is the one-to-one -one from Let's Resin. So I'm mixing that up here. I've also got my heat pad going on underneath this because it has been quite chilly in this room overnight and the resin has got a little cold. I do um, like a, a lovely little like a lawn almost with a little gravelly border, stones, might make it look like a bit of a rockery and then the little plant pot that I'm going to sit in the top of it. That's what I want it to look like. I want it to look a bit like a plant pot or do I? No actually I think I'm going to do that as it looks like a bit of a rockery as well. Then we'll put the daffodils in the top. Now what I don't want to do is just put the daffodils straight in because they are fabric. I want them to be more permanent. So I've already tried covering this one with ultraviolet curing resin to make it look almost like plastic and it's brought the colours out as well. So I should be doing that with all of them and that is why I've got my ultraviolet on standby as well. I'm just going to keep stirring this up. Now the border of this trinket tray I'm going to want to fill with gravel to make my gravel border. Do I want the gravel to go right up to the top? I think I do. I think I do. But I also want to get in a clear coat across this because I don't want the grass to be right onto the surface. I'm sure it will settle in well, but I do want a nice glossy surface on it. This one, I think I'm going to put, yeah, do I want grass all the way up? Do I want gravel all the way up? I don't really know. I think not, so I might put a layer of clear in first and have a bit of like blue sky, something like that in the top yeah right this should be mixed up now I'll stop waffling put my stirry stick onto my, onto my little messy mat Let's get my stuff out of the way I should get my messy mat over here shouldn't I that would be a good idea there right let's pour some in so yeah I'm gonna get Go for it around the edges, but I do want it over the top, so I'm just going to put some in. Now, when I put the gravel in, it's going to fill that up more anyway, so I won't go too much further. I'll see what the, uh, the gravel looks like first. Now, I've got gravel of assorted sizes here, and it is just common or garden gravel. 
I didn't want it to be all too uniform, you see, that was the thing. So I've got some big stuff, some small stuff. Now, of course, this isn't all going to drop down because some of it's a bit too big, actually. So let's swap to the small one. You didn't think you'd see somebody just putting gravel into resin, did you now? Be honest. Let's do this the easy way. Put it there and push it in. Yeah, this one's finer. That'll do. Of course, you could use fish tank gravel. Yeah, you can get it in all sorts of funky, pretty colours. You can do all sorts, can't you, really? Your local aquatic suppliers, or you can, you can find it on Amazon as well. There's aquatic suppliers on Amazon. They'll provide gravel too. This, I think, I got from Serious Play because it was mostly for landscaping for my model railway stuff. So what I wanted was something that was going to be quite uh, varied rather than all sort of, you know, same size and so on. I'm actually starting to think maybe I'll just fill that one up completely with the pebbles. They're looking quite nice in the resin. You see, it's bringing the colours out. Now, I haven't washed these or anything. I think they're fairly well washed anyway when they come from the supplier. I'll check where I got the gravel from, actually, because they, they do little tiny bags. You don't always necessarily want a big bag of anything, do you, when you're doing uh, crafts. So they do little bags of all sorts, really. I don't know if the Model Railway Fraternity have discovered serious play as a firm yet. I think some must have done, but I've, I've not seen many of their products in on offer on uh, Model Railway trade stands at the, at the exhibitions. But basically they do a lot of stuff for landscaping and all the little models you need for, you know, fantasy gaming and war gaming type things. Now I'm going to leave some of the pebbles so you can see some of them have come up into the clear resin that's on the top, that's fine, because that is going to be our lawn. Now I think that's enough gravel in there. Now I'm hoping that the bubbles will clear. I'm going to keep poking at it. But frankly if I get a few little bubbles, as long as they're not on the edges where it causes little like dinks out of the edges, which always looks untidy, but as long as they're not on those edges, I'm not too worried. Not really. I'm just going to keep poking it. There we are. Yeah, I tell you what, let's do this whole one thing here the same. Right, if I'm going to do that all the way up, I'm going to do it a bit at a time, aren't I? So, while that resin is sorting itself out, let's have a look at what we're going to do with this. Because while this is curing, I can be working on the daffodils, can't I? I do you like the flowers? I do. I think what I'm going to do is take some of this gravel. I am going to take it into the... Actually, into the base of the tray. Just a bit, like that. Just to break it up, make it look more natural. Right, I can start shoveling some into here now as well, can't I? This is going to be easy because I'm just going to keep pushing it in until I get to the base. The base I'll do with a much finer gravel. Go on, you know you want to. Drop down, drop down. Of course the rim of this is a lot s smaller so might not go quite so easily but I don't mind if it's not solid gravel if it's got gaps in it it's okay right, let's leave that and let it settle a bit see where it goes to it's gonna make the sides bulge isn't it <laughs> oh well press them against something. What I'll do while it's curing, I'll sandwich this between a couple of these little boxes. Right, so I think I'm pretty much where I want to be with this one. I might put another gravel have I got. I've got ballast, but that's a bit chunky, a bit too a bit too all the same colour, I think. And a bit of this fine stuff. I need to order some more of this one, doesn't it? I use a lot of this. Need 
the tub out to remind me to get some more. Right. Here we go. Sure, I haven't got more of this fine one. I'd have done a lot more with it. Be good for the bases for a start. Anyway, there we are. Got that fairly flat. So, I can now put a bit more resin in here. A bit more in there. Just kind of going slowly with this because I don't know how well the bubbles are going to come out particularly in this one and I don't know how f much resin to put in because of course the gravel's taking up a lot of space. What I'm aiming for over here now is get a good coverage on the bottom. There we are. Because I'm now going to go in with my green stuff which I'm going to use a spoon because I've got resin all over my gloves. So let's have a little patch of flowers. Don't forget this is all upside down so yeah you've got to keep remembering you're upside down. Take a little bit of it into the side there. So there we've got just a couple of little patches of imagine it's like uh, you know flowering clover in your grass. Don't know what time of year clover flowers. I've never paid that much attention. Really should should I? Right that's that out of the way. Let's have a bit of static grass. Now this is the stuff that if you run electric current through it, it all stands up. <laughs> so it's quite funky. But for this, I'm just going to be letting it lay flat. But what I don't want is any of the lumpy bits. As you can see, there's a few different colours in it. So it's got quite a natural look to it. So I'm going to try and spread this out. Get the colours to vary a bit. Could have mixed it in with the resin, of course, but I'm thinking I'll get a nicer effect if I do this. Hmm. It does tend to clump into balls for some reason. I'm going to get this all over my gloves, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to end up with furry gloves. They're going in the bin after this anyway. Actually, this is trying to stand up, which is quite funny because I don't really need it to. When you want it to, and it's on your on your railway layout, you have to say so you have to really faff about with electrical currents through it and using shakers and things to make it do that. And it's quite funny that it's trying to it's trying to stand up on here. So I'm just getting some patches of this in. Really, I'm not. I'm going to put a final coat of. The just general all-purpose grass scatter that I use an awful lot of. It's my own mix. Uh, the static grass I think came from Javis if anybody's interested. I've had that a while so I can't be absolutely sure. Um, next stage as I just demolish my craft room as you can hear in the background. Come on, make it. Ah, ooh, blimey stuff falling all over the place. Right. The final coat I will be putting on, and I'll chuck a load in the bottom of that as well, I think. Yeah, is this. This is um, scatter from, say, some's Javis, some's... For, I, it's all sorts. I tend to just chuck all my leftovers in and I make up my own mix. But it makes a nice, sort of fairly natural scatter for model landscapes. So I'm going to cover the whole back of it now with this. Now, putting in the resin first has ensured that it's got, like, a... A good layer that will be on what will, of course, be the surface of the little tray. That's what I'm hoping, anyway. If anybody's looking at this and thinking, I bet you can make ponds and things like that. Yes, you can. I'll do a video on making ponds at some point. Because I do need to get stocked up on ponds for a model railway exhibition I'm doing at the end of the year. If anybody wants to come and see me, by the way, that's the only place I have a, a stand selling regularly and I do half model railway scenery and half other stuff. Last year the Dragons outsold my model railway scenery which is quite funny at a model railway exhibition but there you are. It's at the British Motor Museum and it's at the end of October. It's usually around Halloween 
um, and trust me my stand will be very easy to find so if you want to come and see me do it'd be lovely to meet a few people i got into the model railway stuff whoops i was going to do the bottom of that wasn't i i got into the model railway stuff because my dad was into it and it turned out i was quite a dab hand at helping him with making scenery and things and i could paint clouds which is a handy trick so when he passed away, I kind of carried it on, but I've always been an obsessive crafter anyway. So every so often, the two hobbies will overlap like this. And because I've got, um, as the, the, the chap who runs the big model railway exhibition knows me now, um, and I work at the museum as well. So he kind of, he kind of puts up with me doing all sorts of odd things when everybody else is doing model railways. <laughs> It's the little landscaping that does it for me. The trains are adorable. I love the little trains too, but I don't know anything much about them, um, really. Not like the, the, the people who are really into it do. I just love making little scenes and waterfalls and things like that. Right, now I'm just going to top this up. just want to make sure I get a good complete cover over this, which is going to take a little while to sink through, probably. So I'll keep coming back and checking on it, just wanting to make sure that it has actually completely filled up. This could go horribly wrong. Because I've not used this pot mould before, and I certainly haven't used it for any, <laughs> well, any mould quite like this. This is shallow, so I'm pretty certain it'll work. It's just it's to what degree the resin gets through the scatter that I've used is the concern. But we'll see. It probably would have been more thorough to mix the gravel and the, everything actually in with the resin. But as a, a very well known YouTuber I saw the other day said, sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. I thought was a great saying. We do learn more by failing, don't we, sometimes? <laughs> See, I'm not seeing this going down through the green like I needed it to, but it is absorbing, so let's hope. As long as it gets all down the sides, so I'm going to keep poking the sides, I think. I've also got the, as I said, the heat mat on underneath it. Now that will run some heat through it. Now initially, a heat mat, yeah, I know they're intended to make your work cure quicker, but they do also make the resin runnier at first. I can see there's bubbles coming up. So that should help this to, to work. Now I'm just going to mix up a little bit more resin and pour it in here. And then I'll be back to show you while this is doing its thing. I'll show you what I'm going to do with the with the flowers. So back in a bit.
Right then, um, these look like they have cured, so let's see what's what. Now I did put some, I just got these bits of wood, look, and put on the sides. Ooh, it's still sticky. Put on the sides of the little pot here, um, just to keep the sides from bulging out. And as you can see, got some overspill there. <laughs> right, let's just tidy that off. I'll neaten this up with some scissors later. Now that does still feel a little bit soft, but I think it'll be okay to demold. I just want to see if the resin has gone all the way down through the green stuff and the pebbles okay. That's the main thing. Because if not, I'll just I'll start again and make another one. This one doesn't take much resin, so it's uh, it's not a biggie. If I oh, got a soft bit there still, see. I do have to remake but I think that's looking as if it's going to be okay other than the annoying soft bit that's me being impatient and demolding too soon I can sand that that's not a problem as you can see the mold it, it, it is still soft yes I have been too impatient but never mind because that will there you go it's sorting itself out and as you can see mission accomplished other than a little bit of sanding to do where I messed up there um, the little pot is great isn't that cute <laughs> okay one little mole little pot and it's shaping itself nicely right let's have a look at this one this feels like it has cured really rock hard already so let's have a go at demolding these trinket trays always demold nice and easily and yeah it's still a little bit bendy but it is cured there we go we have a lawn <laughs> so this is the plan I was going to pop it there so it can be like a little pen holder or something you can see I've got a couple of little holes in it where it didn't go quite through but look I think the pebbles are quite a nice effect <laughs> and the grass and everything so what I'm going to do is just fill those with a little spot of ultraviolet resin afterwards. But basically, that's our thing. Now, I will probably not stick this pot on here because I think I'd like it to be potentially a separate one. It's still soft. I'm still doing the too impatient thing. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is tidy these up. The little flowers. There we are. And... Uh, attach them to the pot somehow. Now you man see I managed to create that little dew drops on them which I thought was quite adorable but that does mean I've got to make sure I put, face them the right way. So I'm just going to sit them like so and see what they look like. So we've got four little daffodils. As I said I'm being careful to make sure I'm pointing the so that the droplet of Dew is going downwards. Well, I will do when it comes to sticking them anyway. So, this one hasn't got any droplets on it, so that one can just go in the middle. Might need to trim these down shorter, and then I've got a couple of daisies. So, let's trim this one off first and let's get these stuck in place. So, I'm taking Oh, that one's come off completely. Now, that wasn't supposed to happen. That's why I went down the stem with the resin, if you remember. I can always stick it back in if it proves to be a problem. Right, let's do these one at a time. I've got my lamp ready here still. And I've got... Uh, where's my resin brush gone? Let's get a different one. Let's get a pointy one, actually. And I'll get some resin and we'll stick it in place. Again, I'm trying to get the last bit out of my bottle. Right, I'm switching ultraviolet resins um, because I've well and truly run out of that one and I don't want to go and open one of my new bottles yet. So 
here we go now this one you'll see there's the little droplet and it's pointing downwards so I need to make sure it stays that way this is the J Diction um, high viscosity UV resin which actually because it's because it's high viscosity it might actually be better for using as like a, as a glue almost Right, I'll trim this off in a bit. Looks like really to get that droplet to hang down properly I need to put this on the side. Yeah, I need to make the droplets make sense. So there we go, just curing that up. Let's put a little bit around it properly. I want these to stay really well in place. So there we are. Right, next one. Let's find the ones with all the droplets first. There's one with a droplet. Push the lamp out of the way. Now that one, yeah, that can tip back quite a long way. So. Let's put that like so. Make sure my droplet is doing what logically gravity should make it do. Okay, a little bit more around the sides. Yeah, just if, if you're interested, the resin I'm going to be trying uh, next is Vuba. And the one that I've got is, it's just it literally arrived this morning, is Vuba 1. So I think that's what I ordered. So we'll see what that's like, I'll let you know. And also the Vuba Ultraviolet Resin. Uh, although they only do one level of viscosity. So I think I'll still be uh, playing with these high viscosity ones from J Diction. Uh, and other you know other viscosities from the other brands too because I think it's one of those things that I have discovered have different different purposes this is the one I wanted wasn't it one with the other drip there we go let's put that all the way around in fact yeah the more viscous ones are great for doming and things like that right let's try and get that drip in a logical place again So, now the reason I'm, I'm looking to potentially switch to Vuba for a lot of things is it's turned out that a lot of my allergy problems particularly are related to a specific brand of resin because the, obviously the constituent parts do, do vary somewhat. So um, yeah, I'm going to be trying Vuba next because it looks to me as if the part that I'm finding so harmful well, we think it is anyway my chemical expert friend and I have been looking at this um, and it looks like the Vuba one might not be quite so high in those particular parts of the composition that I'm probably the ones I'm reacting to I'm fine with all brands of ultraviolet it's, it is just the uh, epoxy. But I thought while I'm at it, I'll try Vuba's Ultraviolet too. Why not? Dear. I'm getting this all over my hands. I really should put gloves on. For I don't usually bother for Ultraviolet, but when it gets on your hands, it's very messy. And I can see now that I've got a bit where I've been trying to stick that into uh, onto the actual flower and it's made it an uneven surface so let's just do a bit more filling in here just to make that level and look right there 
and then I'm going to poke the daisies in amongst these and set it somewhere to really cure up. And my idea was that the tray would still be a trinket tray but the little pot would be great for like popping I don't know your pens or whatever in and you can stand it on the tray of course. So yeah that's where we're going with the daisies. I'm going to trim those a bit shorter. Pop a little bit of the UV resin on the corners here where I think the daisies are touching just a little bit just to kind of hold them in place. Let's cut the other one down. Can't go wrong with daffodils and daisies can you? I mean that says spring. Doesn't that say spring? Then maybe this one can go here or does it go here? I think it goes there. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where it's touching what there, so I'm just putting some all over the back. And I'll let it sit for a second. 